Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar. My name is Kai Ge Liu. I'm the director of field engineering at Caligens, and also I have Sean join me to present a product demo today. Sean is our senior solution architect at Caligens. Today's topic is uh, embracing big data and cloud, the way forward for SSAS users. In following 45 minutes, also. We are going to talk about the common challenges facing SSAS. For most SSAS users, what kind of problem that trouble you a lot? And then we will discuss how to deal with those challenges and introduce our solutions. After that, we will show you a product demo and walk you through a case study from one of our customers. All right, let's get started. Since the advent of SQL Server Analysis Service, in 1998, many companies have adopted SSAS as their OLAP tool to provide enterprise users with quick data insights and decision-making. SSAS has proven to be a powerful and popular OLAP solution for over 20 years. SSAS supports three different architectures, MOLAP, ROLAP, and HOLAP, and it supports both multidimensional and tabular models. Multidimensional modeling provides powerful data analysis capabilities. It allows users to analyze data from different perspectives and provides roll-up and drill-down capabilities to help users gain insights at different data granularities. The multidimensional model can provide high query performance by pre-processing the data and store it in a friendly, query friendly format. Also, we love SSAS for its rich OLAP functionalities. For example, SSAS can support a variety of data sources. It provides plenty of commonly used APIs, KPIs, and hierarchies. It can perform analysis across multiple fact tables and also, it can use rich MDX functions to build calculated measures. In addition, SSAS also supports many mainstream BI tools, such as Power BI, Tableau, MicroStrategy, and Excel. As a mature OLAP product, SSAS has many enterprise-level features as well, such as being able to easily integrate with the AD, for centralized access control and so on. All of this makes it hard to let go of SSAS. However, for a product that has been in existence for 24 years, in this era of big data and cloud, it is inevitable to encounter more and more challenges. As data grows, problems arise when we apply the same tools the same method to their volumes of different scales. I'm sure many of you are facing these challenges. So let's take a look at what challenges SSAS has encountered so far. The first one is scalability. We all know that SSAS is not designed as a distributed product. It stores the data in a single node server after processing which limits the size of data as SSAS cubes can store. Of course, we can alleviate this problem by upgrading the hardware, adding more memory and storage, and using more powerful CPUs. But eventually, storing all of the data becomes impossible at a certain point. The second one is performance. As the data volume increases, so does the amount of data that SSAS needs to process, which results in a huge increase in data processing time. At the same time, the performance of the query is also impacted by the amount of data. The response time will be significantly increased. Then this in turn leads to a huge drop in concurrency. And uh, the cost will become a big issue as well. We mentioned earlier that in order to process more data, 
and alleviate the performance issue, we can only continue to buy more powerful machines. This will eat your budget quickly. In addition to ensure an interrupted service, many SSAS users will deduplicate will duplicate cubes to another SSAS server to deal with dead refreshment or provide disaster recovery. This also doubles the cost. In addition, with the rise of the cloud era, more and more enterprises are migrating their infrastructure and data to the cloud. Companies' cloud strategies force people to find a way out for SSAS in the cloud. Maybe you will mention AAS. Yes, AAS is an option for um, SSAS on the cloud. However, from uh, an architectural point of view, AAS is also a single node design. So the challenges of SSAS mentioned above are also applicable to AAS. And um, at last, to better use SSAS, you need expert in the cloud, in the OLAP field, who have a deep understanding of multi-dimensional data models. Even for experienced people, model modification, maintenance, tuning tasks are often challenging, time-consuming and labor-intensive. I believe that Everyone here today has experienced um, some of these challenges. And I believe that many people have started to find alternative solutions. So let's talk about what kind of solution we need to solve these problems. And what are the criteria? Here are my thoughts. First of all, we all recognize the advantages of SSAS in OLAP functions and we do not want to lose these excellent functions that SSAS has. And many companies have invested in SSAS for a long time. Experienced modelers and uh, analysts are very valuable. So we want to leverage this valuable, valuable experience in our new solutions as much as possible. Second, New solutions need to have the ability to provide high performance um, on massive data. This is essential. The third point is cloud native. The alternative we seek needs to be able to embrace the cloud era and make full use of advantages brought by the cloud services. Finally, the cost. The new solution needs to have a lower TCO, total cost of ownership. Based on these four criteria, we believe that Caligence is a good alternative to SSAS. It satisfies these four criteria well, and can also solve the challenges we mentioned earlier. Before deep into Caligence solution, I would like to briefly introduce the background of Cadence company. The first thing I'd like to mention is Apache Kaling. Apache Kaling is, uh, is a top level open source project under the Apache Software Foundation, providing high performance OLAP capabilities on big data. The core value and advantages of Apache Kaling are that it can provide sub-second analysis performance and ultra-high concurrency on massive data. Users are not required to write any code or any SQL. So far, there are more than 1,000 companies around the world have adopted Apache Kaling across various uh, industries. Caligence is a company founded by the creators of Apache Kaling. With Apache Kaling as a core engine, Caligence is committed to providing leading intelligent big data analysis solutions and helping customers de democratize their data. During the past few years, many Fortune 500 companies have chosen Caligence as their trusted data analytics solution to drive their business. Now let's take a look at Caligence solutions. 
This is a high-level architecture diagram of Catagen's solution. As you can see, Catagen sits between your data sources and applications. Catagen supports various data sources from traditional relation databases to data lake on the cloud. Meanwhile, Catagen provides services to different kinds of applications, including your internal application through RESTful API, and also business intelligence tools like Power BI, Excel, Tableau, and MicroStrategy through ODBC, JDBC, and MDX. It can also benefit your AI and machine learning wor workloads. Catagen solution can be deployed on both on-premise and a cloud. For cloud, we support Azure, AWS, and the GCP. As we mentioned, as an OLAP tool on the big data, Catagen provides rich OLAP functionalities that can match SSAS, including hierarchy and calculated measures. Users can easily explore data from different levels in hierarchy by rolling up and drill down without any limit. Catagen speaks both SQL and MDX languages. You can your calculated measures defining SSAS with MDX expressions can be easily migrated to Catagen's MDX. We also support cross facts analysis, which is required in many business scenarios. In the next section, I'm gonna walk you through these challenges brought up earlier to see how Catagen's address them from their architectural point of view. Let's first take a deep look at how Catagen solves the, solves the scalability issue. Okay, so in the diagram on the right, we can see that after Catagen's data model is designed, the data will be loaded and processed by a data processing cluster. The calculated results will be stored in the cloud storage, such as Azure uh, Data Lake Service, uh, AWS S3, etc. Because the data is stored in cloud storage, not on the machine's disks, Catagen has no restriction on the size of data. This solves the problem of data expansion. In addition, there is also a cluster for providing query services. Both clusters are elastic and scalable. Clusters are designed to be stateless and do not store any data. It is only used to provide computing power. So as data is stored separately in the cloud storage, um, this kind of a separation of computing and storage allows both virtual machines and the storage to be easily scaled up to support more and more data. Under the hood, Catagen uses Spark as distributed computing engine in both clusters avoiding the performance bottleneck caused by the SSAS single server. With that, you can get faster data processing and query capabilities by adding nodes whenever you want. It's worth pointing out that you don't have to worry about the cost of having too many nodes in your cluster because Catagen provides an auto-scaling feature to adjust the size of a cluster according to the workloads automatically which guarantees the performance, meanwhile, avoiding unnecessary cost. Next, let's take a look at how Catagen solves the performance problem on massive data. Earlier, we mentioned that Catagen uses Spark to perform distributed processing of data and provide query services. Then you may ask, if that is the case, how is it different from other massively parallel processing solutions. We all know that although the MPP solutions do not have the problem of scalability, but the performance will drop sharply with the increase in data volume. Constantly increasing computing resources is the only option for MPP solutions which will lead to an acceptable cost eventually. However, Catagen is not simply offering another MPP solution, right? Catagen itself is a complete OLAP solution. 
we use the pre-computation model based on the classic OLAP theory, combined together with the distributed computing framework and columnar storage to deal with the performance issue caused by data volume. By pre-calculating the data, when queries are issued, the query engine does not need to scan all of the source data, but only needs to look up for the calculated results that are significantly smaller than the source data. With that, Catalyst can provide sub-second query performance and ultra-high query concurrency. In addition, Catalyst has developed a distributed MDX query engine, which can pass MDX queries into distributed tasks that can be executed in parallel, which makes full use of distributed computing framework. Compared with the traditional single-node MDX query engine, the performance is improved by dozens or even hundreds of times. Speaking of this, people who are familiar with pre-calculation may question that not all analysis scenarios can be pre-calculated, such as ad hoc queries and uh, some data exploration. Uh, we don't know in advance what queries will be sent in that case, with pre-calculation, well, pre-calculation still uh, use, be useful in this case. Um, or in other cases, we need to drill down to the data at the most granular level, which means there's no aggregation happen at all. And therefore, the data volume of the pre-calculated results is almost the same as the original data volume. So that means it cannot improve the query performance by pre-calculating data because the, you know, the data scanned by the pre-calculated result and the source data are the same. Um, this makes perfect sense. Indeed, pre-calculation does not handle these scenarios well. Uh, however, Caligence is more than just a pre-calculation solution. To address the above issues, Catalyst allows customers to load the most granular data into models. Due to the difference of uh, data granularity, the OLAP query engine cannot feed both aggregated data and the detailed data. Therefore, Catalyst provides a feature called tiered storage and introduced a click house at the query engine for granular data to optimize the query perform performance. As you can see in the diagram, we have uh, a multiple query engine for different query scenarios. For aggre aggregated queries, Catalyst will use the OLAP query engine. And for detailed queries or ad hoc query scenarios, Catalyst will choose the table index query engine. Um, and at the same time, um, Catalyst also provides the capability uh, of an intelligent query router which will automatically select and use the appropriate engine according to the queries. For users, there's no need to know which query engine will be used. The best query performance can always be guaranteed. So we talked about how Catalyst solves the scalability, performance, and the cost. Um, that as, as, as users often encounter. Next, let's talk about how what value Caligent's unified semantic layer can bring to the business users. Caligent's unified semantic layer is a layer that sits on top of the data model. Users can easily and quickly define various semantics through the graphic user interface, including dimensions, uh, measures, hierarchies, calculated measures, etc. It provides functions that match the semantic capabilities of SSAS. And also it uses the XMLA interface, the same as SSAS, to provide services to applications. This makes it easy to migrate from SSAS to, Cal to Caligence. The semantics defined in this layer can be synchronized to multiple different applications. For example, you can see the exact same semantics in Excel, Power BI, Tableau, and MicroStrategy. 
and you just need to manage and maintain them in the same place. You can also centrally set data access control at this layer so that you don't have to set rules separately in different applications or dead sources, which avoids potential errors and confusion. And uh, at last, I'd like to talk about the improvement of development efficiency brought by Catagens. We all know that the model development efficiency of SSAS is relatively low. Mm -hmm. Usually, we need to communicate with the business users about their needs and find out what data we need to fetch. And then we need to develop ETL jobs, uh, address the model, test the model, and finally uh, publish the model. Cubes also need to be refreshed when publishing the model. So the entire development, development cycle often takes weeks or even months. In order to solve this problem, Catagens greatly shortened the development cycle by capturing queries issued by business users, um, automatically training models and loading data. By exposing all available dimensions to business users, we can let users de to decide what attribute they want to have in the data model. This process is not about you know, delegating the model design work to front-end users, but providing an ultimate approach to let you know, learn business requirement for, for the data model in a self-training manner. This reduces the back and forth between business users and the data development team, and also avoids the error pro model operations. Therefore, both data teams and the business teams can focus on creating new value. All right, we introduced the collagen solution and how it solves the various challenges faced by SSAS users. And uh, I'd like to have my colleague, Sean, give a live demo to show how collagen looks like. Thanks, Kai. Hello, everyone. My name is Xiang Ru, and I'm a senior solutions architect at Caligence. Today, I'll be demonstrating the unified semantic layer, a non-parallel Caligence feature, and how to seamlessly connect to it using any of your favorite BI tools, such as Excel and Power BI. The dataset used in this demo contains movie rating data for movies released in the past two decades. The fact table which contains the actual rating data, is joined by two dimension tables, date and movie profiles. There are 25 million records in the fact table. With this data, we'll be attempting to obtain insights on movie ratings. Let's create those measures and dimensions. To do that, we log into Kylogen's console and launch Kylogen's MDX. Then navigate to dataset to create a new dataset. We're going to call it demo. Okay. In this screen, we are going to drag the existing data model and click next. Now in this screen, you can see that all of the dimensions and measures have been derived from the column names. In order to make the names more business friendly, we're going to rename them. We're going, to, we're going to call this one day. And set it to type of day. Great. We have modified the dimensions for this uh, date table. Next, I'm going to create a hierarchy consists of year, quarter, month, and day. To do that, I click on this button, and I'm going to call it dates. Select the table, and define the actual hierarchy over here, starting from the highest level, year, quarter, 
chipmunks in the hand. Similarly, I'm going to rename some of the dimensions uh, in the movies table. And also, because I already know that main genre, subgenre, and title are in a hierarchy structure, so I'm going to define a hierarchy out of these three dimensions and call it genres. Okay, we have created all the needed uh, dimensions. Now let's look at the measures. We have a count all. And I'm going to rename it as count space all. And we have a sum ratings. So we do not have a measure for average rating. What can we do about it? We know that we have a count all and a sum rating. So we can easily calculate the average rating by dividing the sum rating with count all. To do that, I'm going to create a calculated measure and call it average rating. For the format, I'm going to set it to a number with the two decimal digits. And the expression should be sum rating divided by count all. As you can see, Kylogenes provides a very easy to use interface which would assist you um, in creating these MDX expressions. We have created a new measure called average rating. If you remember from the PowerPoint, we were also interested in finding the year over year rating changes. To do that, I will need to create another calculated measure and call it YOY average rating change because this will be a number expressed as a percentage I'm going to set this format to a percent and for the expression I'm going to use an existing template provided by Caligence select this year over year change and over here we need to supply a few pieces of information for the year level of time hierarchy, I'm going to select the hierarchy that we have just created. The time hierarchy will be the space hierarchy, and the measure will be that average rating measure that we have just created. Great! We have created two new measures. Click through to finish up the configuration. Now, let's connect our favorite BI tools to this newly created dataset. I'm going to connect to that uh, semantic layer. To do that, I will need to go here to retrieve the URL. And then I'll paste this URL here and type in my credentials. Select the data set we have just created and finish. We can see that the semantic layer that we created in Kylogens is now showing up in Excel, and we can see all of the measures and dimensions that are available in the semantic layer. Let's do some quick checking. This count all shows the total number of records. We have about 25 million records here. Now let me drag in this date hierarchy. With this newly created date hierarchy, we can easily drill down to uh, the different uh, granular granularities. For example, you can look at the uh, total number of ratings received for the year of 2018. 
And you can drill down to see the total number of ratings received for each of the four quarters and each of the months. Let's look at the average rating. We can see the average ratings from each of the years. And we can also do a drill down to look at the average ratings per quarter or per month. Let's add in the general hierarchy. We can do drill downs on two hierarchies. For example, we can drill down on this children's genre to see um, the average ratings received, the total number of ratings received for each of the subgenres. So let me remove this count all measure and keep the average rating. And you can drill down on the um, data hierarchy um, for each of the subgenres as well. We can also set this data hierarchy as a filter. And look at the average ratings for each of the genres for a given year. For example, if I select 2018, I can see the average ratings for each of the genres or each of the subgenres for the year of 2018. Now let me put the dates back in and let's look at the, uh, the YOI measure. We can see the year-over-year -year average rating changes for each of the years. It's worth noting that every click I did here generates an MDS query, which was served and responded to uh, sub-second by Caligens, thanks to Caligens' powerful uh, data processing engine. Now, what if someone else uses a different BI tool? Will he or she be able to see the same semantic layer? Let's take a look at Power BI. I'm going to connect to the um, semantic layer using a Kylogens connector, which has been pre-installed. Similarly, I'm going to paste in the URL and choose Direct Query. Let's select the data set that was created. Now we can see the same semantic layer is showing up with all of the defined measures and dimensions. So let's select average rating. By dates. We can also do drill downs over here. For example, if I drill down on 2007, I can see the average rating out of the four quarters, for each of the four quarters. I can keep drilling down to the months level to see the average rating per month. And again, each click here generates an MDX query, which are sent to Kylogens for processing. There's no data being cached or stored in this BI tool. And that's the end of the demo. Back to you, Kai. Awesome. Thanks, Chang, for the great demo. Now, let's take a look at one case study from a top 10 investment bank. The project we've worked on with this customer is risk management. They used SSAS for the market risk analysis. We know that market risk is a type of risk that has existed for a long time in bank risk management. It relies on a large amount of historical data to calculate the risk model. At the same time, because there are many factors included in the market risk analysis, 
the logic of measures is very complex. And the amount of measures is pretty high. In this project, our customers have about 5 billion new records every day and more than 20 tables and 1200 columns in the data model. Users in front desk need both high-level reporting and very fine-grained data. For example, they normally even need to drill down to the position level. In addition to the canned reports, they also need to provide self-serving analysis to front users, including a lot of ad hoc scenarios. That is to say, all 1,200 dimensions in the data model may be arbitrarily used by users without any patterns. The business side also has high SLA requirement for the bit for the query performance. The data team has developed a huge SSAS cube, probably one of the largest SSAS cubes in the world, to address these needs. Even so, only the last 20 business days of data can be stored due to the you know the limit of the size. SSAS cube can store. The complex and huge cube makes development and maintenance work more and more difficult. And the query performance is also far away from meeting the SLA. In addition, the company has also switched the, to the cloud strategies. All data and infrastructure will be moved to the cloud soon. This makes the replacement of SAS in prior, in <clears throat> imperative. We replaced SSAS with Caligence in this project, and the entire solution was implemented on Azure. By adopting their Caligence solution, customers gain the following values. First of all, the business users have gotten better support to make decisions. By upgrading SSAS to Caligence, business needs that are hard to fulfill now can be achieved. For example, the bank wants to process transaction data from different regions of the world, and due to their time differences, the closing time of, trans of transactions cannot be the same in different regions, right? Um, in the past, they have to wait until the end of business day for data processing when all of the data is ready from different, different regions, which made the time window for data jobs pretty small. And the pressure on the entire job is pretty high. Cali supports ingesting data by regions. So each region's data can be pr processed individually without waiting for other regions. At the same time, the data processing time is also shortened to 30 to 90 minutes depends on their uh, different regions. Uh, unlike SSAS, Caligence provides the ability to separate, separate read and write, which allows data refreshment without interrupting the query service and without impacting the query performance. Another benefit is high performance. According to our statistics, 99 of the query response time is less than three seconds and it can support a query request of 100 concurrent users. As we mentioned earlier, this customer is migrating to the cloud. The Kajin solution perfectly matched their cloud strategy. Our products are designed with a cloud native architecture from the very beginning. At the same time, we also provide professional services to help them integrate with their foundation framework on the cloud, such as monitoring service, alerting service, automation framework, Azure Active Directory, etc. In the end, we have a uh, you know happier users, and the data team's life becomes easier too. When you no longer encounter crash reports and timeout queries life becomes better for everyone. All right, that's all the content I have for today. Um, any questions? Uh, well, uh, 
hopefully you got a lot out of this webinar. Um, at this time, we would like to open it up for questions. As I mentioned before, uh, there is a little question box that below the um, below the screen where you can enter your questions. We have several already. Uh, Kai, um, if you could, uh, I'll read them off, and if you could answer them, that would be great. Um, what cloud platforms do you support? Yeah, sure. Um, so as I mentioned in the presentation, we support, uh, you know, uh, Azure, uh, AWS, and uh, Google Cloud. Great. OK, thank you. Um, can Kyogen's provide integration with Azure Active Directory? Yeah, yeah, of course. We have a uh, you know uh, seamless integration with uh, Azure Active Directory. Excellent. Um, with um, Kyogen's, can you provide functionality like year to date, year over year, and uh, complex functions like that? Yes, we do. Um, Sean also, you know, uh, demonstrated the YTD in the in the you know in the product demo, and also for the other um, functionalities, you can easily create the uh, calculated measures using them uh, with a template. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, I guess it kind of along that line, is there a limit to the number of attributes? that you could have? And also, is there a limit to the number of hierarchies or the depth of the hierarchies that you could have? That's a good question. So this is you know, a common challenges for the users who are using the traditional um, OLAP tools. And uh, also, you know, SSAS users definitely um, you know, encounter this issue as well. So we don't have any limitation of the uh, numbers we can put into the dot. Uh, you know data model regarding their attributes or hierarchies and uh, you can even use uh, multiple hierarchies in a single report and the graph of performance will not be you know impacted by the number of hierarchies fantastic okay um what is the size of your biggest client um we have uh, 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 a lot of customers who already have uh, like uh uh, petabyte data loaded into Cadence and managed by Cadence Solutions. Uh, and from their uh, perspective, uh, you know, number of rows, they are like trading levels. Okay, very good. Um, uh, we have time for one last question. Um, can Kyogen's do incremental builds uh, during the day, for example? Yeah. Yeah, that is uh, uh, you know supported in our product, and uh, you can do not only you know based on as you mentioned not only based on the uh, the business date, but also we can do incremental load based on their sub partitions. So you can do uh, you know time based incremental load. You can do like region based incremental load. You can do them both. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to personally add to that. Uh, does that impact the users at all? No, no, that doesn't. So it's uh, totally, you know, transparent to the users. Okay, great. Okay, um, uh, that is the questions that we have. Uh, one last thing that I would like to mention uh, here on the screen is uh, a, a link to our website uh, where you can get not only more information and view more content that we have put together, uh, but we also have a test drive. Uh, the test drive is free. Um, it, the link is in red, uh, kylegens.io slash try. And uh, basically, it'll bring you here. Uh, you just plug in a couple of pieces of information, and uh, away you go. Uh, this is a an online platform. There's nothing for you to install. Uh, all you need to do is just follow the directions, and uh, you can actually upload your data uh, and do all the implementation that you like and even connect your tools to it, and you can see how easy it is to build models. You can see how fast the performance is by connecting your tools. Uh, and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback, as a matter of fact. So please, uh, if you're hearing this, kylegens.io forward slash try. Give us your feedback and opinion on that, and we would appreciate it. We'll even send you a t-shirt. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Um, I think that's it for the webinar. Again, I want to thank everybody for your time. 
And uh, please visit us at collagen.io. I think you'll find it worth it. Have a great day. Thank you.